In this lecture, we are going to be talking about the different types of memory systems that we have as human beings. Now, in other lectures, we are going to be talking about the difference between long-term memory and short-term memory. And these different types of memories are divided between those two major types of memories. Our sensory memory is the primary memory system that we have. Without our senses, it'd be almost impossible to recall information. You remember a scene because you've seen it with your eyes. You remember a song because you heard it or you read the title of the song. You know what cold water is and what hot water is because you touched cold water and you identified it and you touched hot water and you identified it. Afterwards comes the short-term memory. And I'm not going to be talking about it because we are going to talk more in detail about the short-term memory later on. But basically, the short-term memory is divided between our basic short-term memory system and our working memory system. Now, our focus here is more on the different types of long-term memory systems. We have implicit versus explicit memory systems, semantic and episodic memory systems, declarative and procedural memory systems. And we're going to be talking about those fundamentally. Now, your implicit memory is where the information that is remembered on an unconscious level, and you can retrieve it effortlessly. You don't need to put in any effort to remember this information as it is stored in your unconscious brain. When you want to write your name, you don't have to remember how to write your name. It is deeply engraved in your implicit memory, and you can just write your name instantly without even having to think about it or remember it. Now, your explicit memory, on the other hand, is more on the conscious level. It is intentional. You want to remember certain information, and you use your explicit memory to retrieve the information. If you are trying to go to your friend's place, and you want to remember their address, if you don't go to their place pretty often, you might not remember it immediately and you might have to use your explicit memory to consciously look and search for their address in your brain before remembering and retrieving this bit of information. Now moving on, we have our declarative memory. All the dates that we know, the words, events, concepts, ideas, and faces are factual informations engraved in our declarative memory. And of course, there is a link between our declarative memory and our explicit memory because we are consciously trying to retrieve information. When is your mom's birthday? Well, first off, you are using your declarative memory because you're trying to remember a date. And at the same time, you are using your explicit memory because you're trying to do this on an intentional conscious level. Now, the procedural memory, on the other hand, is not related to information, but it is related to actions, skills, performances, and tasks that you can complete. And those are usually linked to our implicit memory, because usually we don't have to consciously think about these things. When you're playing soccer and you shoot the ball, you don't have to consciously remember how to shoot the ball. You just do it automatically because you know how the action goes. It's kind of linked to our muscle memory. You are performing a procedure on an unconscious level. Lastly, we have our semantic memory and our episodic memory. The semantic memory is used for us to recall general facts. Keep in mind that declarative memory is not general information. It is more specialized, directed information when it comes to dates, words, faces, and events. But the semantic memory is more related 
to generally known facts. Who is the founder of Apple? Well, it's Steve Jobs. This is you using your semantic memory. Who is Cristiano Ronaldo? Well, he's a soccer player. Again, this is us using our semantic memory. But your episodic memory is more linked to personal experience. It is not declarative, you're not trying to remember dates or words or faces, and it's not procedural, you're not trying to remember actions or tasks. You are remembering an episode in your past, something that happened to you, a personal experience. If at a young age you encountered relationships problem, where somebody cheated on you, and you decided after that to not trust your partners anymore. If you meet somebody and they ask you why you can't trust them, you can use your episodic memory to say you've had a certain experience with a certain partner and therefore you can't trust them anymore.